Hey guys, so it's time for another round of Cyber Dragon replays, and this is a list that I'm currently working on. It's still a work in progress and it's not final. I decided to cut it down to 45 from the 50 that I've shown earlier in a deck profile video, which you can watch so that you can actually uh, listen to a more in depth explanation of the card choices. Uh, in this one, I'm not going to cover any cards really, other than the fact that, you know, I decided to try out maybe a different type of board breaking in terms of just like the Regeki, Feather Duster, and the Triple Lightning Storm. And then we still have the Ethereum package as well. And so, Anyways, uh, really, again, not going to go in detail. I think I will try to work on this list a little further, and once it's refined, I can try to bring a deck profile video uh, later in this week, hopefully. And other than that, let's just get right into the replays. So this first replay is against Fluanderese, and so you're also going to notice that I have a 50 card list here. I was basically just testing back and forth, uh, so you're not going to see the actual, exactly that 45 card list, uh, that, that may be like one of the last replays. Anyways, uh, this this Flunder matchup is really, really hard for Cyber Dragons because, I mean, you know, Dimension Shifter really kills this deck, and of course, as a going second deck, you know, what can you really do against uh, Harpy's Featherstorm, and especially with the loss of Anaconda, I mean, one way to combat this deck previously was um, just trying to bring out Dragoon and actually hard drawing Red Eyes Fusion was pretty nice, but now we don't have that anymore, so it's 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 certainly pretty tough. So he's gonna start with the Prosperity and Duality. I do suspect Prosperity is gonna get hit at some point, especially if they already hit Desires. I think they're willing to hit those cards now. It just makes decks just really really consistent, which will be a, another big blow to Cyber Dragons if that happens. Unfortunately, because we do rely on Prosperity quite a bit as well, uh, because this deck has uh, bricky issues, and especially now that Anaconda is banned, we don't have that fail safe option anymore where you try to just make anaconda with whatever two bodies you have left after getting interrupted uh so yeah we certainly need prosperity more than ever now so he has the uh, whole eaglin windbearer statue i mean this i i really can't believe this deck was not hit at all in the previous list hopefully it does it's just it's a pretty toxic deck not gonna lie i'm not a fan of this deck <laughs> it's like modern day true jaco it's it's got a high, very high floor as well so you know it's it's just always gonna do pretty well so for turn we draw Ash, well that's unfortunate. We actually don't have too bad of a hand and we also didn't get shifted so that's kind of nice. Uh, so we are trying to go into battle phase, he does have to trigger that Dreaming Town in the main phase. So he's going to go off there and then also now we can use Ash. Uh, And so we are going to go into battle. So this is pretty nice, like evening for like 5-6 cards, that's pretty nice. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if we had Dragoon, it'd be really nice just to set up some extra stuff. Um, so we do have the Ethereum Field Spell, and this is where I also uh, decided to play the Foolish again, uh, which I haven't actually since Prosperity came up, but just add a bit more extender now. And with the regular stuff, it, it helps it become a little bit more live. As you can see here, now our Repair Plan is live as well. So that's kind of nice, and instead of getting the Galaxy Soldier, we'll just add the Core instead, just to sort of have some follow-up, because we're not going to be able to do our Infinity play anymore. And so with the Core, we're going to add the Emergency, and we're just basically going to use it to just search the Core. Essentially, we're just sort of playing for the next turn, uh, because we just can't do too, too much. And so, I also can't summon Regulus, uh, of course, I don't know what I was saying earlier, uh, because of the Wind Barrier statue. So we have the Overflow to try to pop it, but unfortunately, it's not looking too good for us, because they just constantly recur resources each turn, and well, at least we have the Field Spell to protect the... Uh, from battle, uh, which is something you always have to remember now that if you're playing this card and so and also don't forget to add off the graveyard too if a monster is destroyed by battle. So he has yet another prosperity and he has a pretty good uh, excavation there. That field spell is just so so good. It really really um, just gets them going and now that with the uh, quick play spell uh, it just helps it get to them very easily. So he's gonna summon the Stry. And then the Rubina will also come back. And then the Dreaming Town of... Or not Dreaming Town, sorry. Uh, now the Rubina. And get the Eglin back. And also gets to have a DD Crow. So that's actually pretty good. Especially when Overflow, you know, we're trying to banish from Grave. Uh, to pop that many cards. Uh, we are going to be forced to use the Overflow here, of course. Because of that Mega Ryza. And so I was expecting him to try to DD Crow something as well, but it uh, looks like he doesn't. So we'll be able to pop the two, but unfortunately we do have to spin some cards because of the Ryza. And he still has that field spell. He's going to use that spell, uh, get the Eaglin, also banish the quick play, and the Stry comes back. And then gets the big boy, uh, Empen, and then uh, Uncle Toucan. 
and gets the Dreaming Town back, and then the Empen comes down. So now we are uh, sitting ducks here. I mean, we, I guess we've been uh, pretty uh, vulnerable for a while now. And that, that continuous spell is also so, so good. Just being able to tribute off any card uh, that we have, it's just nuts. This this deck is just crazy. Uh, unfortunately, like, I mean, you know, we we have the Discolosseum you know, that got spin, but really, it's, it's not looking good. Uh, this deck just builds so much um, on your turn too, not just their turn. And so now they have the Dreaming Town. And just gonna summon that Stry. Get the Eaglin. Summon the Eaglin. Get the Robina back. And also gets the Apex AVM, which is an Omni Negate. So I just, I just scoop here. I was like, there's no point. And one thing I'm trying with Philanderese with Cyber Dragons is I, I'm trying to just intentionally go first instead. And of course drawing summon limits is ideal, but even that, technically, they can still eventually play around it. Especially with their continuous spell to just tribute her off. Uh, but I, I figured, you know, just trying to intentionally go second against Philander, it, it's just so hard. I mean, they just have so many blow cards and Shifter, Feather Storm, and Wind Barrier Statue that just completely can shut you off. So I think it's just, I, I personally at least trying to just go first instead. We're gonna go Nova and Infinity right away. Uh, you could have technically done the Almarsh play first too, just to get, you know, uh, so you can use uh, Nova's effect to detach a Cyber Dragon so that you have some materials in grave for the Overflow, because right now Overflow is actually dead. We don't have any, because we just also attach core as well. Uh, but fortunately my opponent just scooped, so that kind of works out. But that's something you have to be wary of now, especially when you're using King Regulus. Uh, you, you know, it does remove potentially uh, something that you can use to pop with the Overflow. So we're gonna go game three now, and we are unfortunately uh, going second. Opponent is gonna start off with the Robina. Get the Eaglin. And the Eaglin's gonna search champion, so we're gonna Ash here, but he of course has the Call by the Grave, and he's gonna get the Eaglin, and I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I, Lightning Storm's kinda nice, but if they have Feather Storm, for example, it doesn't matter, right? Like, you can't stop that other than Red Reboot. And so, and Empen's kind of a beast in itself. And the Dreaming Town is also a really good card, allowing them to play on their turn. Set 3, that's kind of nice to see when you have Lightning Storm, but we know that they have uh, Dreaming Town. And of course, there's also uh, that Feather Storm that we were just talking about, uh, preventing me from uh, essentially, you know, using monster effects for the rest of the turn, and it's just crazy. Uh, I remember seeing, going up against like a Harpy deck way long ago when I first saw this card. Of course, this is way before Flunder was a... Uh, existed and i remember thinking like wow this card is busted but anyways yeah i just wanted to show you that that you know flunder truly is a hard matchup for cyber dragon so let's just move on to the next one all right so this next replay is against uh sword soul actually it's certainly one of the top decks right now and it's not i would say it's still at least a pretty fair deck at least among tier one decks we've had in the recent few formats uh, he's gonna do the whole uh, long you want play of course you're gonna take the 1200 damage uh, and gets that big Synchro Boy out, uh, also has the Taya, and then gonna banish to just get another token, and do more Synchro plays to get the uh, Sword Master, or whatever you call it, uh, Chi Shao. And so he's gonna be able to Foolish and get the Emergence. Uh, Emergence is pretty, pretty dang good. And so he's just gonna set one, which I assume is probably the Blackout. And so at that point, so I'm like, okay, you know what, let's start with some uh, baits. So we're gonna get the Core. At this point, I'm playing Lightning Storm. I'm not gonna go bother with the back row because I assume, you know, it's probably Blackout, and if it is, and if they don't have monsters, then we're good to go. So we have the uh, core, and we're just gonna get the Lightning Storm, and of course, uh, the big Synchro guy, I did have to take another burn in 1200. A Repair Plant and gets Ash. He's, he's pretty smart. I think he knew what I was doing, and you technically could have gotten the uh, Max Shroud and have the Hurricane Engrave so that you can bring out the Regulus and have an Omni Gate before the Repair Plant, but I don't like to commit too much, re too many resources all at once, um, so, you know, unfortunately this didn't work out, but at least I can still do some plays now, um, and so we will just attach that Hurs uh, with the, uh, Regulus, and we're actually gonna go into line out. I, I kinda mess mess messed up the zoning here, I should've not put the Regulus there so that uh, I would have had another spot open for uh, Lana uh, for like another turn. Uh, but it's okay. I, I always just like, by habit, I summon in these zones to avoid Anima. Even though pretty much like most people don't actually play Anima other than like uh, Cyber Dragons and some other decks. But uh, and so we're going to go into the Monk of Tenny and he's going to bring out the Adhara. And then uh, Shuna effect is special. I did think about negating this and perhaps I should have. Uh, I think... 
Because Vashuda is just so deadly, it just bounces back and it's it's super annoying and it's a really good out for them to out any floodgates and it's really really strong. Uh, he um, uh, so hers is gonna trigger after I try I negate with Regulus. Uh, his um, Bakshia should not have gone to the grave because Regulus only negates uh, and does not destroy, unfortunately. And so he's gonna use uh, Bakshia's effect, bring back it out Hara. Gonna go into Chao Fang, which is pretty pretty deadly because uh, you know it's uh, we can't activate light effects and our deck is pretty much all light, so it, it's unfortunate. So he's gonna get the Ashuna, um, but uh, and go into Monk of Tenny. And also keep in mind we couldn't use Lina's effect uh, when it got destroyed by battle. Normally we could ask something like Core, but because of Chao Fang, we cannot activate the effect. Uh, the funny thing is he's only at 550 life points. I'm like, oh, you know what? Let's just attack into it. Uh, so I'm not sure what that set was, uh, but I guess maybe it was fine. And so we are going into game two. I'm sure he was probably a little frustrated by that outcome for game one. And so for game two, our hand is not good because we have these going second cards. We unfortunately don't have anything to start with because even with the regular stuff, uh, we don't have any machine in gray right now to be able to uh, have it summoned. And that's something I'm sort of finding issue with this package. Uh, it's certainly not nearly as good as it is for Cyber Dragons than it is in, for example, ABC or like other Earth Machine decks. And so, you know, it can get kind of cloggy, so I'm kind of working on the ratio for this as well. Uh, thinking maybe I shouldn't prioritize it too much because it can certainly make good hands great, but when there's a bad hand, it just makes it really, really bad. And so now there's also an anti-swell fragrance, which really, really sucks, so we just have to set everything. And that blackout will just pop uh, two cards as well. And so he hits the ref system, so and eh, that's that's expendable. It was dead anyways. So he's gonna go into the long yuan play, gets the uh, big sinker out, and we will take the 1200 burn damage, and then the Ashuna will uh, special. Get that Vishuda, and Vishuda, like I said earlier, it's just deadly because, you know, you can just bounce and it's just crazy. So I just I just scoop there. I'm like, you know what? Let's just go into game three. So we are still choosing to go second against this deck. I would say if at this moment, Flunder is probably the only deck I'm trying to intentionally go second against, uh, first against rather. Uh, I'm not too sure. I, I guess maybe like Drytron is another consideration. Uh, we're gonna Ash the uh, Ecclesia, but unfortunately he does uh, still have the extenders to just pop off. Or at least I thought he did. Uh, but looks like uh, just like Yong Yong Burn and Baron Pass. I was really, really strange. And I looked at his hand after the two cards remaining in his hands. They were actually both Nibiru. So that's, that's kind of unfortunate. So uh, we're going to start with the Prosperity. Like I said, very, very important in this deck. Uh, particularly now with the Anaconda Ban. We're going to get that Overload Fusion. Unfortunately, with the Prosperity, uh, you do deal half damage. So, you know, it's it's fairly hard to kill uh, under Prosperity with this deck. Uh Especially again, I, I keep saying it, but with Dragoon's pop and burn effect and everything, it would it could have potentially worked out. But now, anyways, we're gonna droplet that overload fusion so we can negate the Baron, and then so Rampage uh, will come out. Uh, and so just uh, just remember the prosperity effect though to deal half damage. You don't want to try to overcommit and then realize you can't kill them and then they just kill you back, right? I did also uh, mess up slightly earlier. I could have gone the Naxxer. I could have special Naxxer instead earlier so that I could have the uh, and then the Naxxer would bring back the Cyber Dragon, you go into the Seeger and do the Overload Fusion thing. And then I would have been able to instead add Core off of the hers, not, and then normal it, and then maybe you could add another card. Although, uh, I think because I wasn't really... I mean, I guess that, that certainly would have been the better play. I'm kind of rusty playing this deck, but because I already messed that up, I decided to just add the Cyber Dragon off of hers instead. That way the Overflow will have uh, more materials to be able to pop on my opponent's next turn. And so we will just pump that Rampage, and so again, uh, it's at 42, so basically with half damage, he's taking 21 each. And then we're going to set that Overflow Pass, and uh, again, I looked at his hand and he ended up drawing Chalice Return. So we do still take that one, so let's move on to the final replay. Okay, so this final replay is against Drytron, and this player, I know he's usually uh, very top ranked, so obviously a really good player, and so... Yeah, Drytron, I'm not sure why Ben 10 came back to 2, uh, it's, you know, it's a really good deck when it goes first, and... So, you know, you just have to get used to it, I guess. So we're gonna, uh, he's gonna start with the Delta. And you know, it's funny, uh, with this game one, I didn't draw any going second card, so I just told my opponent to just go off, and I was just watching YouTube videos, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm probably just gonna scoop, but I figured, you know what, let's at least see what he puts up. I was curious what, uh, Drytron ends up on nowadays. So he's gonna go into the Beatrice, and use that effect to Foolish, and get the Gamma, uh, and then, the, or rather, 
Actually, yes, yes, that is Gemma. I get their names confused quite a bit. Uh, and then he's going to be able to special out bodies. And then that gives them the two level ones to go into uh, Beta Fafnir. And then that's going to Foolish the Alpha. And then the Ritual spell. And Eda 10 also gets the, back that Ritual spell. And it's just a lot of uh, back and forth using the same card multiple times with this deck. And this is sort of what's new with Drytron nowadays is this uh, Magic Geek card, essentially. And then it'll get them this counter trap that can negate like spell traps. Uh, so, and then I haven't seen this link actually in a while either. I mean, the previous iterations of Drytron definitely played it a lot as well before. So it's certainly interesting. So this is the counter trap that you sort of have to be aware of. And so basically the way I, I when the turn ended, I was like, huh, this is interesting. It's actually more so just very spell trap uh, negation focus. So I was like, yeah, I mean, you know what? They're machines. We can handle this quite easily actually. So in draw phase, he also has a Lancia. So that's interesting. Uh, so we can't use the Prosperity, unfortunately. Uh, but you know what? We did Hard Draw Cyber Dragon, which comes very useful in situations like these. And then we can just get rid of those other two cards, which were machines. So now our guy becomes uh, triple, uh, or rather 3,000 attack. And then the Link, again, is only more of a Spell Trap negate. So we can just try to go into our Infinity play. And of course, that Counter Trap also only negates Spell Traps. So we were in a pretty good position there. So we do take that win. Uh, we would have rotated him anyways. And for game two, he is forcing me to go first. And so, you know what? I was kind of interested by that because I think I might have even intentionally tried to go first anyways against Strytron. Uh, fortunately, my hand, even though I was trying to decide for a second, my hand was actually essentially meant for going first. So it, it worked out for me. I think as a Drytron player, you should just go first. There's no reason for you to, uh, you know, you're just so much better off going first. I, I guess it's a little different because they are machines. Maybe that's why he was worried. I personally... I would have been more scared if I was uh, forced to go second against this matchup. So we're gonna go with the emergency and we'll just add the hers on um, that way with the droplet. If we can just discard it, then we can just uh, add and plus off of that. So unfortunately we are met with the dark ruler and I was looking at his hand and he actually drew that for turn. He didn't have any other going second cards otherwise. While uh, while infinity is negated, we're still attempting to use that effect just to get that cyber dragon grave in case we need to get that overflow uh, live with multiple pops right away. So he's going to have the Link Rebo and then the Gamma with the Benton. Uh, it's pretty, pretty nice. So the Alpha comes out and then the Benton gets the Herald. So now at this point, I decided to use the Overflow because he could go into that bird thing and then eventually into Zeus and just clear everything anyway. So I'm like, you know what, let's just not give him the bodies. And then because we also knew that we had the droplet for the Herald. And then also hers can trigger and then we can just add either the core or we can add a uh, cyber dragon i decided to just leave that core in the graveyard sometimes that's actually beneficial because you can banish it or rather sorry i don't even have a core in the graveyard what am i talking about it's already banished from overflow so okay never mind ignore that but e e either way uh it sometimes it is still beneficial to leave that core in the graveyard in a situation where you know all your monsters are going to get cleared so that you can uh bring back the uh, bring out the Naxxia through Core's Effect and then bring back the Nova Infinity. Uh, he's gonna have the Prosperity, so that's kind of nice, hopefully. Well, not hopefully for me, but hopefully for him, he can get some kind of extender to get him going. And he does, in fact, uh, excavate the Nova. And so he's gonna use the Nova to special out another Drytron monster, and he's gonna get the Zeta. And then he'll just go into Lino. And this is actually a pretty cool play. He actually gets my hers. And it's a level one. Uh, so like he can actually do his Drytron rank plays, which I thought was really, really cool. I've actually seen like a, a lot long time ago when Drytron kind of first emerged. Uh, they also, I have seen some builds where they were playing hers. Uh, and, and actually in another instance where I was playing against a Drytron player, he like used talents to take my Chimeratech Rampage and then use Rampage's effect to uh, mill like Drytron monsters because they're like machines. So I thought that was like super big brain play. It was, it was really funny. So uh, something you have to watch out for when you're playing against this deck. Uh, they can use some of your cards against you. And so of course, gonna go into Zeus, but we're actually in a pretty good position because we have that Cyber Dragon and he knows we added it too. So I'm not sure if that was actually the right play. Uh, we have the machine dupe, unfortunately it's dead. He is forced to use that Zeus uh, send, but we have that overload fusion we've been saving and we're gonna be able to game him, uh, assuming he doesn't have other hand traps of course. First with the Rampage, let's just get access to that core. So we're gonna use Hers effect just to add back that core that we just milled back to our hand because it is considered Cyber Dragon in the grave and on the field. 
then with core uh, I'm gonna search the ref system so that we can get that second body so we can go into Seeger so that's something uh, there's other options you could technically also go into like let's say search a cyber level fusion bring out rampage and then go into Seeger with like I don't know I guess that's just a more convoluted way uh, this was just more straightforward and so I decided to go with that uh, my opponent here didn't think he was taking damage from Rampage, but remember this is gonna come up a lot when you go on dueling buck. Uh, they will take damage from Rampage They're just not gonna take damage from Seeger. So we do take that victory there fortunately All right guys, so that was it for cyber dragon replays. Hope you found that interesting and helpful Definitely a lot harder to pull off matches now without anaconda But things will get a little fun once clockwork comes out by the end of the year And that will make all monsters on the field to machines as always, thank you to all my Patreons, Eileen Dice Queen, Bolt Spider, Cybernetic, Brandon Jaren, Bear Lord, Spooky Boogie, Gradora, and the newest Patreon, Steven Phillips. Thank you all so much, it's so so much appreciated. Take care guys.